Hi guys, this is the uh, UC46 uh, cheap £53 projector. It's a 800 by 480 native resolution. It's got Wi-Fi with Miracast and DLNA built in. Uh, it's got VGA port, HDMI port, a couple of USBs, uh, SD card slot, AV input and a headphone output. So we're going to have a look and uh, see what it's like. This is the box that it comes in. It's completely unbranded. It just says Wi-Fi ready on it with a few logos. Um, there you go. I'm that's pretty much the only accessory you get with it, that power cord and the projector. Uh, the packaging was sufficient to not have it smashed to bits on arrival, so that's enough said. So this thing at the time of purchase was £52.99 on Amazon Prime, which isn't bad going. The price has now gone up to £67 on Amazon, but you can find it for a similar kind of price if you want to wait for it to come from China. So let's turn it on and have a quick look. As you can hear, the fan's fairly loud, and uh, I'll just spin the camera around so we can have a look at the picture. So this is the kind of size of the picture. It's not too bad. And um, turning the lights off, it's actually bright enough to watch at a reasonable size, so I'm quite happy with that. So if we try and dial the focus in as best we can, I'd say that's about focused down where it says movie. But when you, uh, when you adjust the keystone, it throws, this is all still reasonably focused, but it throws the focus way out down at the bottom. So the, uh, the keystone's really quite bad and you need to, need to just make sure you can align the projector well. So I've just plugged the memory stick in, we'll have a look at what playback looks like. So select movie, and of course it's named C, that's the back button, and We've got Big Buck Bunny, so pressing OK selects it, and also starts a preview apparently, there's quite a lot of lag on that, wow, okay, so that started the preview, and then pressing the play button should play it, there we go. Crank the volume right up so you can hear the delights of the internal speaker. So the native resolution is only uh, 800 by 480 I think, so it's no 1080p or full HD, but as long as you sort of align your expectations, it's, it's pretty watchable. The built-in speaker on the other hand is really terrible, so I think what we're going to do is just disconnect that and we'll use the uh, headphone output into some proper speakers. Pressing the menu button we've got uh, a picture mode which doesn't seem to change a whole lot apart from the brightness. We'll leave that in the movie. Colour temperature control. So I found that actually lowering the red helped a lot because the skin colours really came out quite red. So I'm, I'm sticking it at 25 red, 50 green, 50 blue. And there's aspect ratio control which you can leave on auto. Noise reduction doesn't seem to make any difference. And you can rotate it for different mounting options or if you're projecting from behind or in front. Uh, change the language, the internal speaker can be enabled and disabled in software but when this is set to off I have noticed a few times that it carries on working so there's something wrong with that and the disable button doesn't really work. Uh, super colour, if you turn that on it makes all of the skin colours look even more red so I'm going to leave that off. The colours aren't quite as vibrant but they're slightly more realistic. Uh, the clock settings are all pointless, sound settings are all terrible, and there we go, that's the extent of the settings. So press the input button, use the arrow keys to go down to link. So at the moment it is in Miracast mode, and that uses Wi-Fi Direct, so you don't have to pair it to your router. Your phone can stay connected to your router if it supports it, and cast to the projector over Wi-Fi simultaneously. If you press the OK button on the projector, it will change the mode to DLNA. Now DLNA basically just allows you to stream content to the projector rather than share your screen. So I'm going to stick with Miracast. In DLNA mode, you pair your phone to it and then the projector can be paired with your router. 
So in mirror cast mode, I can just hit cast on uh, the Android pull down menu. And link will come up. And it will then say connection in progress down at the bottom. And that is now casting my phone screen. Now you can see there's, there's a little bit of lag on that using the built-in one. What I have noticed, this is a OnePlus 3T, it's got a 1080p screen. Um, the lag will start to build up and build up and build up. And if you're watching a video, let's say, oh, you can see it glitched a little bit there. So this is just casting a YouTube video and in full screen with sort of high FPS content, you can see the lag really, really builds up. And it'll reach a point where it just come, becomes unplayable. So the built-in mirror cast is pretty useless for higher resolution displays, even casting directly to it. Uh, Dom's tried it with his uh, Mi Mix, and it was slightly better. So maybe it is just a OnePlus bug. Um, I found with lower resolution tablets and phones, it does work quite a lot better. So if you've got a lower resolution phone, you're probably going to get on fine with this. So I've just bought a second-hand Chromecast to plug into it, and we'll give that a quick try now over HDMI. So this is with the Chromecast connected. If I connect to the Chromecast, and there's actually a built-in USB port on the projector, which seems to work okay for powering this. You can see the lag is a little bit better, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good now, and you should be able to watch YouTube videos pretty seamlessly. So that was casting through the Chromecast and it was quite a lot better to be honest. So if you get this projector and you're not happy with the built-in mirror cast, just try picking up a second-hand Chromecast. You can get them for about 15 or 20 quid. So we've seen the quality of the built-in speaker in the projector. We'll have a little look at the audio quality of the headphone port now. So we're going to try driving into a pair of headphones and into an audio amplifier so you can hear the difference in quality between the two and it is quite different. So there you go, driving into like a low impedance output, or like a pair of headphones, the distortion's quite bad uh, if you get above half volume, so you can either listen to it really quiet or with really bad distortion. Uh, driving into an amplifier at half or even full volume seems to be fine, so if, if you want to use like a little uh, amplified pair of headphones or a preamp for your headphones, that should sound fine. So the fan's still quite loud, so what I think we're going to do is have a look at what's inside this, and we'll see if we can slow the fan down a little bit and disconnect that internal speaker because it's quite annoying. So we're going to whip the screws out the back of it and have a look at what's inside. Okay, so we'll just whip this uh, little multi-way cable off. So this here is the ribbon cable for the buttons on the front. Uh, this ribbon cable goes to the uh, LCD which is in here. Uh, this looks like a Wi-Fi antenna. And uh, this is going to a little blower fan here. Uh, this wire here is coming from the power supply in here, the uh, main DC power supply. So there's a few things that I'd like to have a look at this. Uh, one, I've already cleaned a speck of dust uh, off of the LCD, which is under this. There's just uh, screws one, two, and three, I think, to get that off. So we'll whip that off in a second. Uh, I want to disconnect the internal speaker because it's complete crap. And the other thing that I'd like to do is see if we can run the fan at a lower voltage or replace the fan with a quieter one because it makes a bit of a racket. So we'll just carefully whip this ribbon cable out, pull the, uh, pull the black tab in this direction gently. Should be two fingernails. Should make a little click and then pull that out that way. And just be careful not to uh, fold it or snag it or anything. That just goes down into the LCD under this panel. We can bend the Wi-Fi antenna up out of the way. There we go. So this panel should just lift off. 
So the components in here are quite simple. There's the uh, LED chip, which is under this circuit board. There's a heat sink on the other side of that we'll see shortly. And a little uh, box to project that out. There's a little lens in here. It's either a lens or a polarizer. Uh, the LCD in a little plastic frame here. And uh, another Fresnel or Fresnel lens here, which does the um, Keystone. It's uh, purely mechanical and it's, it's pretty bad, to be honest with you. It seems to go quite far one way and not very far the other way. And we've got a mirror here that then sends it out through the focusing optics to the wall. So if you've got dust specks on the lens, uh, chances are, if, if the specs are in focus, they're probably either on the lens or most likely on the LCD panel. Mine were on the LCD panel. If they're out of focus, then they may be on the um, Fresnel lens or the mirror or on the light box or, or on another surface in the optics. So after taking the screws out to get this board out, we'll just have to pull this two pin connector out, which is probably for the LED. Just using a pair of pliers, kind of gently. There we go. So the board is currently stuck on the uh, connectors down the side, so it needs to come up a little bit like this, and then out, and then it will come through. So this one goes to the VGA input. Uh, these ones are coming from the power supply. There's an infrared receiver for the remote. That's quite bad. It would be nice if that was on the front or if there was two of them but I don't think I'm going to change that. So it looks like in this configuration uh, this chip here is a TSUMV59XUS and it's a highly integrated uh, single chip solution for analog TV systems. So it looks like that's taking the majority of the inputs actually. Yeah it looks like it's taking most of the inputs in uh, for on the video side of things and the uh, rock chip RK2928 is the uh, SOC, that's the processor for the whole thing. So this chip here is the uh, RAM for the CPU and this little one here off to the side is a 128 meg uh, serial flash. So that's probably where the uh, firmware is and this is just the RAM for when it's up and running. I was kind of hoping that it might be possible to upgrade the um, quality of the audio output, maybe find a new uh, digital to analog chip, but it looks like that's all handled internally in the rock chip, so that's, that's out of the question. So there's one more little chip hiding under here, and that is a um, memory card reader chip. So that's handling SD card and possibly the USB ports there and allowing them to talk to the SOC. So it looks like we need to take this cover off next. So there's what looks like the LED... Uh, chip on a board there, an aluminium PCB, and a little um, heatsink attachment with a heat pipe going to the heatsink, and air is just being blown from this little fan. And that is the fan for if anyone needs a replacement, they're quite hard to find. Um, well at least this model number is, it's a 15mm thick by 50mm uh, fan, 12 volts, 3 wire. And what I'm hoping to do is try and run this one at 5 volts, see if it's a bit quieter and still sufficiently cools the projector. If not, we'll have to buy a name brand one, which are about 10 quid. Okay, so in this assembly we've got another Fresnel lens and a little uh, reflector hood made out of sheet metal. So I was wrong about this little two pin connector, I thought that was for the uh, LED power, but the LED power comes straight with uh, black and white cables off the power supply. So there must be like a rem remote enable or something that comes through this to turn that on. So this two pin cable, it's not actually for the um, power for the LED, the LED is fed straight from the power supply. It goes to the speaker, so we can just disconnect that to disable the internal speaker. And it looks like there's a little uh, thermal switch or something down there. So it's been running for about 10 minutes at 12 volts on the fan and the heatsink's got up to about 55 degrees C. So I'm going to try dropping that down to 9 volts and giving it about another 10 minutes because the temperature's pretty much flattened out now. So this is 9 volts after another 10 minutes and it's just sitting there at 62 or 63 degrees C. 
and another 10 minutes at 7 volts, the heat sink's reached uh, 71 degrees C, which is getting a bit on the high side, so I think we're going to aim for about 9 volts. Uh, all I'm using is a 7809 linear regulator with uh, some capacitors soldered across the legs. I've just used uh, SMD ones. Um, the input's fed from the red wire on the fan connector on the board that goes into the left side of the uh, IC. The output goes from the red wire to the fan that's on the right side of the IC and the blacks are just common together and connected to the middle leg. Uh, the yellow wire is um, for uh, speed sensing and that's left intact but I don't believe the board actually uses this signal anyway. So there we go, that's quite quiet now. So am I going to recommend that you go out and buy one of these uh, projectors? Now, if you align your expectations, I paid £53 for this on Amazon Prime. I think it's alright, to be honest. So it's a 800 by 480 resolution, it's not HD. It is watchable though. I mean, compare it to a low quality phone screen, I guess. 1080p on a phone screen is nice, but does it really need to be that high? Um, just for playing about with, I I wouldn't I wouldn't change like family movie night to this thing. But if you just want to watch a film or prop it up to, to have another TV to watch in bed or something, then this it's absolutely fine for that really. So I'm quite happy with it. We've done a few mods to it to improve it a bit, make it a little bit quieter. Uh, the audio quality of the built-in speaker was obviously rubbish. So just be prepared to ditch that straight away. Um, the mirror cast kind of worked, but if you can plug a Chromecast into it, then that's, that is a better option. It's fairly neat plugged in like that. So I hope you found the review useful, guys. Get an idea of what's inside this thing and whether they're worth buying. If you can pick one up uh, with quick delivery for around the 50 quid mark, then I'd say it's worthwhile, but this one's gone up to £67 now, which is probably stretching it a bit. You'll probably be able to find a better deal on something like AliExpress or Gearbest. So um, check out some of those Chinese sites for a slightly better deal. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been the UC46. If you like the video, uh, like, comment and subscribe, please.